Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire in a very warm but not very sunny Scotland. But I've still got my suntan lotion on because you can never be too careful. It is pretty hot by Scottish standards, about 25 at the moment, which is uh, 25, double it and add 30, which is 80 Fahrenheit. 80 Fahrenheit. That is good going and it's going to get hotter because Scotland's about to get temperatures pushing 30 degrees which is about 90 Fahrenheit over the coming three or four days so in the meantime we're back out um, just two of us today and we have got this man here and apologies for his legs with that sock combination but that is Mr Fletch and Mr. Fletch is on the old Garrett AT Pro International. We thought he'd gone part-time uh, as a metal detectorist because he's not been out in that long. And it looks like he's actually uh, sinking a cold beer just now as well. Well seen, it was me that was driving to get us here. So, this is the field that produced that beautiful big lead weight that I believe is medieval. Probably dates to the 11, 12, 13 hundreds, but it could be even older, still waiting for confirmation on that one. And uh, got the, what I believe is a dagger shape, which I'm pretty certain is medieval from same sort of period, 11, 12, 13 hundreds. We've had Georgian coins, George II, George III, and uh, quite a few bits of milled silver as well, and lots of relics besides. So, fingers crossed there's going to be something to turn up See if uh, the old XP Deus 2 can put the Garrett 80 Pro to shame, like it always does. And I am going to go with Program 3, Sensitive Full Tones, which did me very well with the hammered coins the other day. So thank you for all the new subscribers, doing very well, growing rapidly, lots of views. And if you don't already, give us a subscription and hit the like button if you like what you see. Right, let's see what we can get. I've not even had a chance to start yet and Fletch is already in with two finds. Side by side, these are lead bag seals or bale seals. These are off of bales of flax that's come over from Russia or the Ukraine kind of area. You can see a date on one of them, 1888, 1889, thereabouts. Yeah, they're both lead, they would carry the date the manufacturer it's also some sort of import export sort of uh, information and the bales of flax were milled in the uh, mills of Perthshire into linen linen bed sheets linen pillowcases tablecloths etc it was a huge industry from the 17th 18th and 19th centuries good start just two minutes in and I have got my first diggable signal. Solid 71. Seems to be a reasonably small target, so fingers crossed. Coin, maybe a half penny? Let's give it a bash. Okay, not the deepest of signals, somewhere in the clod. Is that there? That is, hey, hey, that is a ring pool, but it's a vintage ring pool. That's 1970s, 1980s, that's old school. Oh well, no coin to start with. And he's in again. Mr. Fletch has got himself a halfpenny. You can just make out the bust of Victoria there, looking to the left hand side and on the reverse. It's a little bit tatty, but you can see the date at the bottom. 1885, one half penny. 
So Queen Victoria ruled for about 60 years, 61 years if I remember rightly, from the middle half of the 1830s until 1901. The world's biggest opium dealer back in the day. Helped to make the British Empire very, very rich. Now this one I'm not so sure about. It's coming through 85. But it's a bit wishy-washy. Might just be deep, but might just be rubbish as well. Maybe a bit of lead, but let's find out. Fletch came over to give me his opinion. It was a deep one. It was about nine inches down and it's just come out right here on that last spade full. He said tin can all day long, but that ain't a tin can. What is it? It is metal. Maybe pewter, possibly even lead. Let me give it a a wee spray in case there's any markings on it. Quite enjoying having this wee bottle. Well recommended by various people. I used to have a bottle for spraying down the fines. If you watch my videos for long enough you'll remember. But um, it was just too small and didn't hold a lot of water and then I held out until I found something suitable and I thought ah use an old suntan lotion bottle because at least you're able to get enough water in it that it lasts you a full day digging and it certainly does so what is that folks it looks like the top off of a flask you can see it's had a screw top on it could it be related to the military because their military range was close by um, it feels like it's either lead or pewter. So, any idea of age? Could it be sort of first, second World War era? I wouldn't think so, because you would have thought they would have known that, pl uh, that lead and pewter by then, they would have known it was toxic. But then again, you do still get some old houses in the UK that have still got lead pipes, which would suggest that in the 1850s, 1900s, they still didn't know that lead was toxic. So what do you think on date for that? Could be old, could be a few hundred years old, but let me know in the comments below. Catching up with Fletch again, and he's got himself another pair of new finds. Both of them are hem weights. So these are lead weights sewn into the bottom of the pleats of a lady's dress to stop them blowing up, having a Marilyn Monroe moment in the middle of the field. And they're probably both around the Victorian period, I'm guessing. 1850, 1900s, or thereabouts. One on the right looks a bit cruder, and the one on the left looks a little better made, maybe a little bit more modern. But both good finds. At the moment, the uh, the old X, I don't know what is it, Garrett, Garrett AT, Pro, uh, AT Pro International is having a field day. Fletch is on the silver. George V. By the grace of God, King of the Britons, Defender of the Faith, and Emperor of India. It is a sixpence. And you can see the sort of oak leaves. And the date of 1929. So, nice coin. A little bit bent. And George V. Um, probably our most common coin that we ever find. So I'm sure he'll be very happy with that. Well done, Mr. Fletch. Whilst I was digging that last find, Fletch stole my line and proceeded to metal detect where I would have been metal detecting. I just carried on straight because I knew that obviously the XP DS2 is far better than the, the Garrett AT Pro International. And Fletch has clearly missed this signal. It's a 59. So, who knows, maybe a buckle, maybe a bit of lead, maybe an old bullet, but we'll give it a go and see. If we're really lucky, it'll be a hammered coin and then he'll be furious. Okay, so Fletch is shouting, I told you it was a tin can. Well, he's wrong, cause down the hole, if I look, get that grass out the way, see right there, there is a bit of white. 
and that, ladies and gents, looks like a lead seal, potentially. It's got a circle on the back, and hopefully it's got some writing on this side. It's quite stuck on. Let's give it another once over with a suntan lotion. And it's a beauty. That is a beauty. Look at that. So what looks like two flags, they're actually keys, crossed keys. You've got a sort of Maltese cross at the top and you've got a number three at the bottom. This is another flax seal. And this is from Latvia. This is from actually a, a city called Riga which is the capital of Latvia, if I remember rightly. And the cross keys and the cross are the symbols of Riga. This probably dates to some time in the early 1700s, could be in the 1600s, but normally they're around the early to middle of the 1700s. And again, this is a flax seal. We've had quite a few. Again, anyone who's watched some of my older videos, these would have been attached to bales of flax. You can see the little gap there it's the same on the other side because there would have been a, a little bit of string uh, would have passed through there to wrap it round the bales of flax so flax that came over from the baltic the black sea area to scotland to be milled into linen now they're really good find i love getting flax seals especially when they look this good and i think i've got about 15 of this variety excellent this one is an ear blowing signal. Eighty six, eighty seven. For some reason, I think it might be a big bit of iron. But there's only one way to find out. And I'm afraid I was right. Just under the surface is this great big rusty piece of iron. Damn. Bar a couple of tin cans, which I will spare you viewing. Um, it's been pretty quiet for 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so, but we've got an ear blower here. Coming through at 84. I don't think it's a coin, it's within the realms of a coin, but uh, it might be copper, copper alloy, uh, buckle, maybe a bullet, something like that. So let's give it a go. I'm back in that part of the field where the ground is like rock. It's so difficult to dig, but thankfully it was shallow, just a couple of inches down. Don't actually see, I know I do. It's a bullet, I think, right there. It is. It is a bullet with a lead core. So I think that's um, sort of calibre that you would have in one of those old fashioned, uh, old fashioned sort of service issued revolvers. I'm not sure the calibre. Not that big on my guns, but if you know, and let me know in the comments below. Date-wise, I'm guessing it's probably from the World War II era, around 39, 1939 to 1945, but I suppose it could be First World War as well, 1914 to 1918. I'm very close to the military range, as I said before, so what do you reckon? Let me know in the comments below. This one came through at a 50, 51. And it is a very, very tiny little bullet. You can see the rings round it at the bottom. It's a 2-2. Uh, it's lead. I didn't film it because it felt a bit trashy. I just took the top off and it just happened to be in the first couple of inches. But shows you how good this machine is at picking up small targets, albeit it was only a few inches down. But it's a lead bullet from a 2-2 calibre rifle like a rimfire rifle probably less than 50 or 60 years old oh well 
another pretty weak signal, 55 to 60, and uh, just a quick scrape of the ground with the old foot moved it, so it wasn't any kind of depth, and it's just a little square, kind of squarish piece of lead. Purpose unknown. You might be able to hear a noise behind me, which is the neighbouring field being harvested by the farmer. He's got his combine out and he's picking up the barley and harvesting it as we as we detect the field next door. So yet yeah, another field's going to be available to us from tomorrow. This signal here though, not the best. Bit scratchy. 74 but it's been quiet so let's give it a go and we have got a bendy bullet that is a world war one or world war two era i think it's a 303 and it is bent as you can see it's hit something pretty hard a ricochet but it's a find on to the next just caught this one right on the edge of my swing. I'm uh, doing a little bit of a grid system at the minute because whenever you get something good or a couple of good things, it's always good to just make sure you're not constantly missing big areas. Coming through. Pretty consistent, 74, 75. A little maybe irony tone there as well. Seems to be quite a big signal. So I don't think it's going to be a coin, but let's give it a dig, see if we've got some ancient relic. I did have my suspicions that it wasn't great and a bit of an irony tone. It's another one of these old berry tunnels, berry drill fittings. Oh well, you've got to dig them to find out. I forgot to let you all know that Sneaky Pete turned up about an hour and a half, two hours ago. He's got his nice shiny XP DS2 as well. And uh, I've fared really badly. The last hour, hour and a half, I haven't had a signal. Well, not a decent one anyway. Pete hasn't done much better. He got himself a skinless and boneless mackerel in tomato sauce. So what the old farmers used to eat back in the 1990s, 2000s. And his only other find was this, which is a little lead disc. Whether it was a hem weight for a lady's skirt or whether it was a lead seal at some point that's worn flat or some sort of token, who knows? But unfortunately, that is all we've managed today. So some days it just doesn't work out. Yesterday, six hammered coins between two sessions in one day on the same field, the Gold Noble field, and today not a thing well pretty much nothing apart from fletch who got that silver milled coin jammy swine so if you like what you see and you don't already give us a subscription and uh, we will see you on the next dig thanks for watching